Hello and welcome to this video on the characteristic features of cerebellar disease. The cerebellum is a brain structure primarily concerned with the coordination of movements on the ipsilateral or the same side of the body. Complex movements appear as a range of simple and clumsy movements without precision when the cerebellum is damaged. Most disorders reflect damage or disruption to the feedback circuit between the cerebellar cortex and the cerebral cortex or somewhere in between. So let's have a look at the typical symptoms we'd expect to find. Here's a drawing of a chap who's unsteady on his feet and he will be suffering from a range of symptoms. The first of those will be hypotonia. This is a decrease in muscle tone, presumably because of issues associated with feedback of unconscious proprioceptive information from muscles coming from the muscle spindle fibres and the Colgi tendon organs. This is marked by lessening resistance to passive movement, i.e. the limb that is moved is moved easily and muscles are floppy and weak. Next up is ataxia. This is abnormal gait and therefore the patient will stagger around and walk with their feet wide apart to keep their balance and compensate. Remember, there's two types. There's cerebellar ataxia and there is sensory ataxia. And sensory ataxia is associated with problems with the dorsal column medial liminiscal pathway, not the cerebellum, so worth remembering. Decomposition of movement is jerky and imprecise movements that are neither fluid or smooth. The cerebellum is involved in complex movements and it can carry out very precise movements. And so when it's damaged, one of the most obvious things that we see is jerky, slow, imprecise and non-fluid movements. Next up is dysarthria, which is an ataxic form of a speech problem. In cerebellar disease, this sign is due to motor programming of speech and is associated with slow speech. Words are not pronounced correctly. Syllables of each word are unnaturally separated. Some words may be uttered with explosive force. And there are also issues surrounding the rhythm and emotion that we often inject into our speech during conversation. So this is an ataxic form of a speech problem associated with motor programming of speech. So there are a few main symptoms. We're going to move on and talk about some of the others. One of the main symptoms which often people think about with cerebellar disease, is the intention tremor that we get. This only occurs during movement and gets worse towards the end phase of the movement. Unlike Parkinsonism, there is no tremor at rest. So remember that with cerebellar disease, we have an intention tremor that only occurs when we engage in a movement. In Parkinsonism, there is no tremor during movement. The tremor manifests itself only at rest. So... That's worth remembering uh, the difference between the two. So the next thing that we want to talk about is a long clinical term known as dystidocokinesia. And this is an impaired ability to perform rapid alternating movements of bilateral forearm turning so this would be pronation and supination so often the patient is asked to rapidly pronate or supinate the arm and the attempts become irregular often with one arm lagging behind the other and so they're not synchronized or coordinated movements after a time so this is dystidocokinesia Often associated with the tremor is something known as dysmetria. This is an inability to judge distances correctly. And this often manifests itself as undershooting or overshooting target objects. So typically in a clinical scenario, the doctor may ask the patient to rapidly touch their own nose uh, with maybe a pen tip and the clinician will move the pen around and ask the patient to go between touching the pen tip and their own nose and what you'll often find is that the patient will undershoot, misjudge where the tip of the pen is or their own nose or overshoot their nose or the tip of the pen and this is known as dysmetria and is one of the key symptoms associated with cerebellar disease. So often we think of dysmetria and uh, the intention tremor together. The last one is something known as cerebellar nystagmus. Nystagmus is not something 
only associated with or just associated with cerebellar disease, but it's caused by an interruption of connections between the cerebellar nuclei, vestibular nuclei in the brainstem and a tract called the medial longitudinal fasciculus. This allows or enables for the movement of our eyes in a coordinated way to look either left or right or up or down. And nystagmus causes an unregular movement which is characterised by movements that are smooth in one direction counteracted by movements which are jerky in the opposite direction. And although nystagmus is poorly understood, it is a characteristic feature of cerebellar disease. Subscribe to Soton Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.